Hi, this is the Python Streamlit course in which you are going to learn how you can easily build web applications with a Python library called Streamlit. This is great for those who only know Python because you don't have to deal with the hassle of learning HTML, CSS as well as JavaScript for building a web application. Using Streamlit, as you can see here, this is the official website of Streamlit from where you can access several helpful pages. Using Streamlit is very simple. It is a Python web framework. All you have to do is pip install it and you are ready to go. So it's as simple as drawing components on a web page as you can show in the tutorial GIF on their official website. We'll be going over several components, how to use them, actually deploying an end-to-end -end Streamlit application in the future videos. This is how we install Streamlit. This will be shown in the next video. Streamlit apps are essentially only Python scripts and that's it. You can push it to GitHub and deploy it easily using any cloud provider or Streamlit's own servers. There are several amazing components which are inbuilt. So here's a slider, here's a file chooser, color chooser, radio button. We'll be covering these in the component section of this course. You can also deploy instantly as I told. Uh, it's a one click deploy feature. Very easy to deploy a web application. I'm Sharon Babu, your instructor for this course. I'm a undergrad majoring in computer science and I wish to share my knowledge regarding Streamlit and Python in general. I have been using Streamlit for quite some while now. I have used it to build applications and prototypes for several hackathons and through this course I will be sharing some of the best practices and show you how I build some of the Streamlit applications. You can learn more about me by visiting my portfolio website www.sharanbabu.ml some of my projects and here's the Streamlit project. Please feel free to give feedback about the course at this email. You can also come to my GitHub reposit repository uh, and search for the repositories I show in the course. That would be the easiest way to access the code files since they are all already present here. With that said, let us have a look at some of the important pages as I had mentioned earlier. This is the Streamlit documentation website. By far the most detailed and you know comprehensive source for gathering information related to various components and functionalities that Streamlit provides. Here's a short how to on how to, to use their docs. You can navigate using this left pane. I'm currently at the API reference guide. We'll be covering a few of these APIs in this course. All the code examples have been beautifully explained using examples and standalone streamlit applications which can be visited to know more about the functionalities. The next important page is the community page. You can head over to the community by visiting the URL discuss.streamlit.io. Everything ranging from official announcements to whatever doubt you may have, a bunch of great people are here to always help you. You can also search over here to see if someone has already asked your doubt and if that has been solved. This is what your profile would look like after you create an account with Streamlit. Just an example of my interactions with the community, my what I shared and my doubts. Head over to the gallery streamlit.io slash gallery to see what other people have built. Streamlit was released way back in October 2019 and really took off as the best framework for building data science web applications. You can also use it for other interactive purposes. There are a huge range of applications for which Streamlit has been used. You can filter them by category and have a look at them here. Another great thing about Streamlit is components. Great contributors contribute components to the Streamlit community and you can <coughs> directly use them with two or three lines of imports. Some great components. In, I'll, in a future video, I'll show how I use this component over here, Streamlit A's, to build one of my applications for a Facebook hackathon. The second last resource, Streamlit blog. Head over here to visit the change logs. Streamlit is frequently updated with great updates. Using Streamlit with 
several other integrations. The blog's a great place. This is Streamlit's official repo. If you feel you understand how Streamlit works and would wish to contribute to it, feel free to come over here and send a pull request. So in the next video, let us have a look at some of the applications I built to get ourselves excited for the rest of the course.
Welcome back. In this video, we are actually going to code and build our first Streamlit web, web application. I'm going to use Anaconda. This is recom highly recommended as well for uh, using Streamlit without any hassles. You can also follow along with me to avoid any errors. Download Anaconda from the website here. Click on the download button of the corresponding OS version. Create a folder for yourself. We'll be changing the directory later from our anaconda prompt to this directory and running our streamlit applications open the anaconda prompt and create an environment after creating an environment you can activate the environment in this case the name of my environment is hack hackathon so type something like conda activate hackathon you this you can confirm that this works by seeing the change in print here so you are able to see the environment's name to the left now all you have to do is pip install streamlet to improve uh, to install the streamlet library since i all have already installed the library it shows requirement already satisfied for you if you if this is the first time you are downloading it will take some time you can also confirm that you actually have streamlet by opening the python shell or right click uh, typing python and hitting enter right in the anaconda prompt this will Activate Python environment. You can import Streamlit and print Streamlit's version. In this case, Streamlit 0.78 is the version that I have downloaded and it has been successfully installed. So, the text editor of my choice is Sublime Text 3. You can download it easily by just a Google search. Now, let us have a look at some of the components, commonly used components, that will let you build amazing Streamlit web applications. So first things first, import the library, import streamlet as st, st is the common conventions, you will see everyone using st, you can name it whatever you like. So let's see the first component is stream or the API reference, whatever you wish to call it, st.title, my first streamlet app, save the file. Open the command prompt. You can see the path of the file here. So let's quit this. Let's clear the prompt. Okay, so we have to push CD into the working directory. In case you have never used a PowerShell prompt, CD, is st CD stands for change directory and I'm navigating my way to the active directory that is where I have saved my streamlet python file. That is wherever I have saved first underscore streamlet underscore app dot py. So what I have to do now is to run the python file and generate the website. The command is streamlet run a name of the file first streamlet app dot py. Click enter. Now you can view the applica web application on your browser. See this is the title. This is what, let us have a look at it side by side. This is what ST.title my first streamlet app did. So just to show you. Second title. Since you have saved it, it's since this is the first time you are saving, it asks you whether to rerun only this or click on always rerun. It is always better to go for always re rerun if you are in the building phase. Since you don't have to reload the web application each time. So now any change you make and hit save. So second, I don't know, second line. Hit save. I am just pressing Ctrl S. And the change is reflected on the website immediately. So this, this is great for changing things quickly, reordering things and stuff like that. Let us have a look at some of the other commonly used components. Let me just comment this so that you have a better understanding of what we are doing at each instant of time. Next one is called header. So st.header. Again, in case you forgot, we are calling this st because we named it st over here. So if we change this to something else, 
do change it here as well only then will it work st.header save so headers are a little different right they do not have the bo uh, bold font that titles possess and they are a tiny bit smaller next we are going to have a look at how we can display markdown markdown if you don't know is very similar to html feel free to have a look at what you can do with markdown by googling markdown cheat sheets that would be the quickest way to get started it's very similar to html hit save so st.markdown is the function you have to call for displaying markdown text on your website Now we are going to have a look at some color, color text. The first function is called success. Uh, it's going to be displayed in the color green. So let us go with that st dot success. Yay. This was success. Hit save. And this is good to show confirmatory messages i have used in a few of my web applications it's uh and the counterpart error displayed in red oops this isn't actually an error we are using streamlets one uh, one of the functions available st dot error to show red color font to let the end user know that something went wrong. Two other colored components that may tend to be useful are warning, yellow. So you're able to see right we are with the help of this easy to call functions that essentially draw components something like on a white canvas. You are able to build your web application from the ground up in the way you want. You are able to easily lay out without knowing HTML, CSS or JS st.warning yellow text hit save and it will auto update you can also refresh if you think you got disconnected from your command prompt if you want to end this application you can click on the x button here or simply click simply press ctrl c while in your prompt the last one is info blue have a look at this too a neutral color which is a great way of presenting information to the user and info you need to know something like that let us expand the application you can also come over here click the three lines over here you can rerun clear cache in case you are using the caching functionalities of streamlet we'll have a look at this later you can also go to settings and click on show app in white mode if you want have a look at this this is what white mode did i think we can avoid that for now yeah so this is what our current web application looks like let us go on with several other components in the next part of this video let us go ahead with some more components the first one will have a look at in this video is st.exception this is what it produced this looks more authentic in the sense that it looks more like an error this is fine too but you can use this if this is what you prefer the next one is getting help in a streamlit fashion so range is an existing streamlit sorry python function it is a built in function so using st.help renders a beautiful widget on the web application itself that explains how to use range and essential documentation i think that's great documentation the next function is one of the most important functions of streamlit and that is the right function you can write pretty much anything with the right functions whether it is a pandas data frame which is essentially a table or you just want to write 
simple python functions or render the text of variables or constants on your web page you can do all that with st.write let us stick with normal text for now this is what it looks like you all you have to do is replace it with python objects and it will re uh, render most of the python objects as well so for example a is equals to 10 random variable just put a here and you see that you get 10 on the web page let us work with some media next that's going to be exciting first images i have in my working directory called streamlet i have one image called one.jpg since we are in the same directory i can do something like st dot image one dot jpg so this was the image that was in my directory and it's displayed here streamlet automatically provides this expand button as well so great set of inbuilt functionalities since images are done let's go with video now let us have a look at the file name it's called demo video and the format is mkv the format is also equally important only then will the application be able to detect detect the file in the directory so as you would expect it's st.video for displaying a video on the web page demo video.mkv great you can play the video now as simple as that you can expand change the volume download as picture in picture mode as well great since we have covered images as well as video let us have a look at how to display audio as well as you would guess st.audio is the function to call let us have a look at the file name audio sample and the format is a wav file okay that has been brought up as a component very beautifully as well you can change the sound and download let us listen to the output salut salut that's high in french okay those were the three main ways in which you could interact with different types of media that is images videos and audio now let us have a look at some other useful inbuilt components this is these are the components that are going to make your website interactive like we have seen some of the applications in the demos shown in the second and first videos of this course checkbox <laughs> let us have a look at the application built so far we covered titles displaying text in general displaying colored sections errors help media and variables and objects python objects let us continue with our components st dot checkbox first check and this is the checkbox as you can see i am checking and unchecking here but there's no change on the website so how do you want to take action depending upon the state of the checkbox that is whether it has it been selected or not do it this way if they use the if conditional of python okay now the expected functionality can be seen now i'm going to select the checkbox and you can see that a text pops up it says checkbox has been selected so how is this working if st.checkbox first check so what essentially is happening is only if it has been selected
do whatever is in the block following that component else don't so if i uncheck this this text over here shouldn't be displayed and yes the functionality works as intended you might have noticed this already but one caveat with streamlit is that all the lines in the program are rerun whenever a state of the component in the web page changes so when i click first check you are not able to notice it because it's considerably fast but almost all the components over here are being rerun so this may possess some challenges when you're dealing with machine learning models that have to be clicked and called upon multiple times for simple applications and normal interactivity it's just great let us uncheck this for a while so that is how checkboxes work something similar a radio button they are mutually exclusive you can select one of the many options so this time okay let me first show the vanilla flavor and then we can see how to add interactivity so you, the first parameter is name of the radio button my radio i'm going to go with something silly like that and the next parameter is going to be the options option sorry about that option b and click save see two radio buttons pop up you can only select one of them as radio buttons are always mutually exclusive and we want to take some functionality based on that but as with the checkbox we don't see any functionality that can be implemented right now so we want to store this in a variable first state equals to and then go for st dot radio function and now the state variable is going to select the option selected the value of the state variable is going to be whichever option is selected on the web page so if this is the condition what is in state let us just print state st dot write states have a look at it since option b is selected currently you see that state variable holds the text option b and we are displaying the same let us change it to option a you can see that option a is the text displayed now so that is how radio buttons work next are drop down buttons or select boxes as they are called in streamlit so as in with radio button and checkbox it is better to have a variable to maintain the state of the select box so i'm going to go for selected item and then go for my function so i'm going to do st dot select box select option a small text that will be displayed to prompt the user to do something and the next parameter is going to be all the options you want to provide enclosed in square brackets a b this is to all go for now and see we have a drop down box you can also display what the correct current selected option is so you can do something like st dot right you can also do st dot markdown selected item save b a we'll be having a look at some other important input components in the next video so up until last video these were all the components that we rendered up on the web page we are going to have a look at some other important components in this video as usual i wanted to show that the documentation page exists and if you have doubts or wish to see what else can a component do or wish to discover more components you can always search the docs and use the left pane over here to navigate your way through let us get back to some more components here's a nice one slider slider sliders can be used in a variety of purposes and use cases so all you have to do is st dot slider 
name of the slider i am going to do something like select range since that is one of the most common functionalities for which you would use a slider and give the range 1 to 5 okay that's invalid syntax and that's because i missed a comma you can see the slider now i missed this comma over here these have to be three separate separate parameters the name of the slider initial range point end range point here's the slider you can change the value you also want to know what was the range selected right so you want to store this in store this in a variable range i'm going to name it range var st dot write range var going to change it to 5 yeah it displays 5 the next one is really important buttons if st dot button clicked st dot right click just now save and click the button as you saw you get the text only when the button was clicked so this is how you want to trigger functionalities execute a function or pretty much do anything so the those were buttons as shown in the checkbox before you don't want to just type st dot button because it would be a dead button you want to enclose it in a if block and have the functionalities that is that you want to execute only when the button is clicked inside the block we have reached half almost to the end of the num uh, required important components to build a good feature rich web application next important component is text input the primary way in which you are going to accept in input information from the user so info, I'm going to store the information that the user enters in a variable so that I can use it in other backend functionalities. st dot text input name of the input box enter something. Oops, this should be an opening parenthesis. And the next parameter is optional. It's essentially a tooltip text that a placeholder value. Save and it displays the word enter dot 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 as the default default value as that was the parameter we passed in as a placeholder i will remove it for now or you can have it empty you can enter anything you want here sometimes you want to accept passwords from user and when you want to accept passwords from user you don't want to show them as plain text so I think this would be a great opportunity to show you how to use the docs as well. Go to the docs, docs.streamlit.io and let's uh, search for the component we are dealing with. The function we are dealing with is text input, search for it. Let me maximize this. Search. Okay. This is what we are looking for. Streamlit. Have a look at the parameters here. Okay, this is the parameter we're looking for. Type. Type determines whether we are entering plain text or a password. So to make it a password field instead of a plain text field, all we have to do is we, we somehow don't need the placeholder text. Type is equals to password. Great. Now you get the eye pop up. I so by default you're not able to look what the user entered click here and you should be able to see what was entered great so that's text input the next important function is text areas if you want to accept larger chunks of text or uh, text field is going to be pretty small so let us go for text area you want to store this information as well for further processes st dot text area the names are easy to remember uh, if you would ask me it's audio for audio video for video uh, the names are pretty self-explanatory so even if you come back later 
you should be able to understand these code files pretty easily. Name the text area and hit save. Okay, so this is the change. This is the text area shown on the web page. My text area is the caption or name of the text area. You can also use this to throw some light into what you're expecting from the user to be entered. If you want this to be even larger, a useful parameter is height. Height is equal to, let's go for 350. It's pretty big now. So let me change that back to normal so that we are not consuming unnecessary space. Yes. Date time. Input date time. This is an inbuilt library in Python. I'm just going to show how this component works using this library. st.date input name provide the name date time dot date time dot you don't have to know this this is not a commonly used you know function so this is the date this also comes in built with the calendar so you can change the date as per your will pretty sweet similar to date input you also have another function called time input you can feel free to check that out i think this the next one is really helpful displaying json often when you deal with uh, projects where you have to scrape the web or get responses from an api it's usually sent back in json format that is javascript object notation streamdill provides a functionality that makes it easier to show json on websites it's easy to digest so let us have a look at that st.json. So let me just hard code one JSON here. See something like that. This makes it really easy to have a look at the JSON on the website. You can also copy it to clip clipboard if necessary. We will be having a look at the final set of components in the next video. After that, we'll be building applications to solidify our knowledge of the various functionalities and APIs available in Streamlit and then go ahead and deploy it on the web. See you there. This is the final video that we'll discuss about components. From the next video, we will be actually implementing uh, some Streamlit web applications. So let us have a look at the final set of components. Displaying code. These are slightly less used, but really helpful and handy. ST dot code. As you can see, this is how code ST dot code works. You can copy the code and this is a nice way to display code on your website. So we have ways to display JSON on the website, ways to display normal text on the website over here and specific ways to display code on the website. This helps uh, look make the website look fresh. So that's pleasing to the eye of the person using your website. The next helpful one is spinner. That is when a process is happening behind this code, you want to let the user know that he or she has to wait a little longer. So I'll just input clip since I won't be implementing comment that data is equals to st dot file uploader upload image and the next parameter is going to be called type and you have to give an uh, array of accepted extensions so in this case i'm going to go for jpg comma okay so let us have a look at what we built so far a lot of components to digest for sure 
do rewind the video watch at different speeds to understand how to use the components again again a quick overview of the different components we used and it goes to show how easy it is to use components and get stuff done with streamlit you can prototype quickly and advantages of streamlit include as i told you don't have to learn multiple languages and frameworks to build web app web applications you may also think that django and flask are better alternatives for heavy weighting applications and that might be true but for prototyping quickly you definitely want to consider an application like streamlit so in the next video let us actually implement something from scratch using the component knowledge we gained in the video so far thanks welcome back in the first few videos we had a look at different components that streamlit provides out of the box and learned how to use it as you can see here in this video we are going to build a calculator a simple calculator uh, to solidify our knowledge on how to use components so let me create a new file let's call it calculator.py remember, remember the directory in which you're storing it import streamlit as st st.title my calculator this is going to be a simple app but yet shows you how you can use streamlit for a real life application save it let us run it and have the website right beside our screen to debug and change the layout of the web page effectively as i have showed in the previous video you have to run your file using the command streamlit run and name of the file ensure that you are in the actual directory wherever the file is present streamlit run calculator.py click enter after a second's time the web page will be loaded in your browser okay so we had only set the title and here is the title okay we can min minimize the anaconda power prompt uh, for a while st dot title my calculator so how do you want to lay out this what are the functionalities you want to provide i am intending to give two text inputs to the user in uh, where one input one number input will be taken in each text field and then i want to give a select box to select uh, to let the user select the operation then i'm going to calculate the value and return back to the user so let us do that this is a simple application but it shows how to use the component we have learned so far so let me just save that hit save click always rerun the first time you open your web application so now each time you make some change and hit save it will be automatically reflected on the website okay mm -hmm. first number we want text input text input we want the prompt to be enter first number let us give an example to the user great zero is the placeholder value default value and if some other number is selected the variable called first number will instead hold this value and that is what we want to happen as well let me copy this we want a second number to perform our operations that will be our second operand so to speak second number just change it accordingly maybe make this five great now you want to give the user some options right the operations that could potentially be performed operation i'm going to name the variable operation st dot select box select operation that is what i want the user to do and in an array select give the options addition subtraction great let us stick to these two for now you can see that it indeed does work let me change that to lowercase u to be consistent okay so now we have the first number second number and operation if operation equals to addition this is how you compare two values in python i want you to the program to add first number and the second number store it to a variable result and what do you want to do the, do with this we'll get to that later else lf operation is equals to subtraction let me copy this 
result is equal to first number minus the second number right so what do you want to do after the result is completed st dot success your result is let me make that an f string result i can do the same for the subtraction part of the code as well now why did this happen because both the inputs are currently strings so we want to do int of first number plus int of second number that is exactly want to do over what you want to do over here as well let us see what happens now. addition works as intended subtraction works as intended as well let me try one more value say addition expected result 106 yes so if you instead want to compute this result only if a button was clicked how do you want to do it if st dot button you want to change it to if st dot button name of the button and indent indent the code we already had below the button so that this code is executed only when the button is pressed another small change i made is you have to first type cast that is convert the data type of the string you accepted in this text input fields over here to integers so that you can actually add them or else they will just be string concatenated and if you add say 10 plus 5 you would get 105 since that is how string concatenation works instead of the expected result which is 15 so you have to convert each number to int so that is what i'm doing here at both the places so let me get that back okay so now we have added a button and stuff works only when the button is clicked let me show that once again addition 1 11 you should get second number oh sorry it should work now 16 great now i want to add a spinner i believe i showed how the spinner works in the components section of this uh, course let us have a look at how it works since this is a very low time consuming computation you don't really need a spinner because a spinner is essentially used when you want to let the user know that some computation is happening at the back end and you want the user to wait so let us create a situation just to use streamlit spinner and show you how it can use and be used in real life from time import sleep first i'll show you how spinner works without using sleep so all you have to do is wrap this entire stuff within the spinner right computing results okay in the last tutorial we had seen how to build this simple calculator app website in streamlit in this tutorial let us have a look at how we can reproduce this layout of a streamlit website that i had created in the past i'll be coding along with you so that you better understand how to do this so let us get started with it let us create a new file let us call this sample.py or any name you wish to and if an streamlit web app is already running you can either close the anaconda prompt or just hit ctrl c stops clear the prompt streamlit run sample sample.py but let me have a few lines of code here before i do that st dot title okay it looks like the title here is hack for africa aocr so that is going to be my title hack for africa aocr okay let's hit save and run the application takes a second and then you can see the web application getting opened in your browser okay it already has so let us see okay that looks like it's a header 
you can also use markdown and then use raw html parameters to make it bold but using a header would be much simpler let's and it is optical character recognition with voice output let us do the same optical character recognition with voice output click always rerun to see uh, effective change Okay, it was rather a subheader. Subheader is slightly bolder and slightly smaller than a header. It doesn't matter. We are trying to get the layout right. The uh, little details can change. So you have st.text and st.markdown. Let's see which one this text over here is. Select source language. So if you're wondering, this was an application built to language text from one language to another. We won't be implementing the functionality in this tutorial. You basically have to write Python code within the if blocks and else blocks as I had shown in the components tutorial to, to show some effect on the website when a component is interacted with say a button is clicked, the select box option is selected, something like that. Select source language from the sidebar. We don't have the sidebar yet, but let's just show this. Okay. So it was st.text okay okay nice so if we have a file to be uploaded let's call that image st dot file uploader okay so the text that should appear on top of this drop file button or the file uploader should be upload image that string so i'll type the same and what are the extensions i want to ac accept jpg and png let us see if that worked yes looks good to me then finally on the main pre main page that is everything excluding the sidebar we have a convert button st dot button convert okay that looks good that also looks similar to how it looks over here but as I had mentioned in a previous tutorial, you want to wrap it in an if statement. Only then can you add functionalities only when the button is clicked. In this case, I let it be passed. So it won't do anything even if the button is clicked. Since our goal here is to only replicate the UI here. So let us tackle the sidebar now. Pause the video if you want to go to the components lecture again and try to build construct the sidebar uh, pane of this web page by referencing the APS or go to the documentation and try to figure this on your own and then play the video to get the solution. All the components used here have been covered in the previous video. So first let us have a look at the sidebar. We have to create it like this and we have a title which is language selection menu. Then we have a subheader which simply says select. Then what do we have here? A from language. So I'm going to store the option selected in a variable called from language as well. What is this? That is a select box. What does it say? From language. That is the prompt that lets the user know what is to be done. And an array of options. So let us go with, since only English is visible, let us go with the English, French. That should be enough for now. Okay, maybe you want to leave some white space. This is how we do it. Use st.write, then empty quotes, or literally nothing in between the double quotes. Then you have a subheader again. You can copy paste the same as this line. So let me do that. It's the same line. Then you have two language. Again, I want to store the result in a variable. Let me copy this again. Since it's the same repetitive code. Okay, let us give a white space. Okay, so if you have noticed there is one obvious mistake I have been doing from line 15. And that is
if i save the way it is right now all this components will be rendered up on the main side of the web page no but i instead want them to be displayed on the sidebar so that fixes that giving a white space and one last subheader i guess enter text yes the text area in this case since it looks a lot, lot larger than a normal text input auto detection enabled that was text area i don't think the height has been changed so there's a last button and the button's name is translate again you want to include sidebar that is very important since we don't have anything to execute right now just hit pass save and the moment of and the moment of truth okay multiple widget id this is a common error and you can change it by changing the key so which widget is throwing the error select box so let us set keys for our select boxes one two this is to differentiate the options selected in both the select boxes looks like that error is gone okay looks pretty good to me let us compare the application side by side okay yeah the sidebar looks similar and the main page looks similar as well that's great so so from scratch we implemented this layout it looks pretty good to me you can select stuff enter stuff browse files and add files and then implement some functionality so in this case i had simply implemented a language to language translation web app as i had told it also does ocr and then gives voice output these are done using basic python image processing and voice libraries if you are interested you can have a look at the code here let us just have a look at the code once ECOR is streamlet for the web, web application that we just built ECOCR for OCR these are for audio this is for translating text from one language to another and this is these are for image processing the pill and cv2 are pretty famous image processing libraries in python so you can see pretty much the same i have extra languages here have a look at this have a look at the code here by visiting the repo sharan hyphen babu forward slash hack for africa microsoft hack okay so the only difference between this web app size is wherever we entered the word pass so because we didn't implement the functionality here so you can compare the two codes here and see what is it that i am doing at this part of the web page when the button translate is clicked when the button convert is clicked yeah so that's pretty much it i'll give a walk through of several other streamlit applications i built in the next few videos stay tuned for that okay so we are almost reaching the end of this course in the last video we built this simple web application optical character recognition with voice output being the main feature in the web page and language translation on the sidebar we didn't implement the functionalities but we had a look at how to lay things out in a web page using streamlit now before go going and seeing some other applications and code bases to understand how streamlit was used in several applications let us first deploy it that is get the app on the web so i call this file sample.py locate the folder in which you saved the file over here it is just create a new folder and follow the structure i am following here i am going to name this folder deployment you can name it whatever you want so since my file is called sample.py i'm just going to take it here okay so that's sample.py here and you just want to add one more file here for deployment to be successful and that's called requirements so it should have the extension .txt it's a text document 
and what you want to hear is the libraries that has to be installed in the host server in this case we are going to deploy the web application using streamlit sharing this is a common procedure to be followed even if you are deploying the application on say aws or google cloud so let us go to the file ones are we using any external libraries no it's only streamlit so you only want to add streamlit if you want to install a specific version of streamlit because say some functionalities are depre deprecated in future versions of streamlit but you're still using the older versions you you then want to opt for a specific version of streamlit if you want to do so just add equals to equals to and version in my case i don't want to since i used a pretty new version of streamlit so let let's just keep it streamlit say i had something like import numpy as np numpy is an external library so you want to install it on the server as well right only then will the application work so you want to add numpy to the requirements list as well since i'm using only streamlit i'm keeping it at that hit save let me change this as well hit save create a new repository fine i'll add it streamlit app that's what i'll call it you can add a description later let us add a readme file you can also come over to this repository under my github profile called streamlit underscore app and you essentially want to add these files whatever is in this folder to your repository that's how that's a part of how we will deploy this file to the server upload files and just drag and drop these two great hit commit commit successful you can see your code here now what you want to do is head over to your streamlit sharing page as i have told if you had already requested for an invite you should have received in an invite in three to four days and if you have received and log in with the correct account you should see something like this i already have two apps deployed let us create a new app okay it is able to auto detect since i logged in already with my github account main what's the name of the file sample.py so you want to change the main file path here the branch is it main yes it is main so let that be you want to change this to sample.py right what is advanced settings here you can choose the version of python you want to select and say you're dealing with api keys or sensitive information that you don't want to share on the repo you can add it here in this format and call it in the application using st.secrets key name in this case we are not having any such information so we can let that be you can also visit the blog to read the latest article on how to use these secrets feature okay i think we pretty much done and as their feature name suggests it's one click deployment let's click deploy button and see if everything goes all right okay here you can see the pro uh, current status of our apps deployment great looks great so far these are libraries that streamlit depends on so those are also getting downloaded the creator is the only person who will be able to see this so after deployment the client won't see it only you will be if any errors arise we can use this to debug as well let us give it a minute to deploy great looks like it's done have a look at it the same application which we developed on our local machine is now on the web you can share this url with anyone for them to see and use it as well so that is why streamlit is very widely known especially for data apps as in with our case we saw how we could use different widgets for our own purposes in this case language translation 
so there you go from raw code file local web page debugging and changing the layout to structuring our deployment folder adding to adding it to a public github repo and then deploying it on the web it's very simple and i hope you got the rough idea of how to deploy any streamlit website in the next video i'll get back to you with some other cool streamlit applications and resources to learn streamlit see you then okay so in the last video we had finally deployed our web application as you can see here after the deploy you should be able to see it on your dashboard your streamlit sharing dashboard which you can visit by entering the url share.streamlit.io now let us look at two other streamlit applications i built in the past and try to understand the code base okay the first one is called apollo 19 i had showed the functionalities of the application before itself i'll just show one to refresh your memory something like a project theme so if you remember we used something like st.txt and st.markdown right this was done using st.markdown i'm just changing the font color to be blue that's it this is the code base as i had told uh, i had used tensorflow deep learning model to predict outcomes from input images so these are the models related to the same so let us go to the main file this is the streamlit file you can come to this repo by visiting my github profile and then typing agba hyphen hack or directly visiting this url so in our application we only had streamlit right so since this is a big application that provides a lot of uh, functionalities like a chatbot deep learning image processing table processing we have other external libraries we need if you notice i also have other streamlit components for example this is a streamlit component i didn't have to code anything for this i get the features this component provides right out of the box all i have to do is call the function it's pretty sweet you can have a look at the components available by visiting streamlit.io okay i think i had briefly mentioned about st.cache without showing the code but here is how it is actually used if a function is called too frequently you don't want to the user to wait a long time and you don't want to rerun the same code if the result is going to be the same right you cache such results and you essentially do it by adding a decorator and all you have to do is write the line at the rate st.cache above the function you want to cache these are some config keys tokens this is the back end for the chatbot let us go directly to the web page side of things so as you can see i'm using radio buttons to let the user switch pages so that is the type of layout i have chosen this is the main radio button we had discussed this in the component section of the page you can this should be pretty understandable sidebar titles and main titles and if you remember based on the value that the variable that holds the option selected in the radio button holds i want to show a specific screen that is what i'm doing here if choice is equal to skin cancer detector if that was the option cho chosen i want to show these components which are these the other way of putting that is i don't want to show this if some other page is selected right so that is what i'm doing here similarly you have other pages other components should be pretty rec recognizable we saw covered all this pretty much all this in the component section of this course buttons date inputs text area select boxes radio buttons extended widgets cool stuff like that you can directly input emojis also in your markdown and they should reflect the changes on your web app so that was the first trap that i wanted to show you this was also another app that i had already demoed at the start of the course so this is an inbuilt component it's called streamlit ace feel free to look it look it up or uh, you can simply type github streamlit ace and yeah that's it some developer have already built it and to use it you simply first have to pip install streamlit ace go to your 
environment anaconda power uh, command prompt in my case just type pip install streamlities stuff will get downloaded and see here they have given an example that describes how to use this component and i have used it in a pretty similar fashion devbot.py was the main file as i have told you it's a single api reference that's what makes streamlit cool some parameter optional parameters that can be tweaked so i did tweak them that's why you can see the change in color these are all inbuilt functionalities and if you remember this uh, text input field this is a button and functionality has been implemented i am communicating with the chatbot framework when the button is clicked so as long as you know python and you are creative enough you can build any web application with streamlit at least light applications that you want to prototype or want to proof of concept for some application so you can have a look at the code again by coming over to fb underscore wit feel free to have a look at other components at the streamlit gallery i hope you like this thanks glad to see that you have reached the end of the course in the in the final part of this course i want to show you some other resources from where you can share streamlit and further expand your knowledge to create great web applications here is one repo which is a collection of other great repos it's called j r i e k e best of streamlit this is a great repo there are around 90 apps they have been categorized very well so depending upon your use case you definitely want to have a look at how various other people have built some applications using streamlit you can go to their corresponding github repos get inspired by their code contribute to their code or get inspired and use them for your own project so there are a lot of categories a um, definite uh, definitely recommended resource as told also do visit streamlit gallery and components to get inspired and have a look at many other streamlit apps other resources to learn streamlit obviously the first one is documentation the best resource to get an exhaustive list of what streamlit can do other best resources are go for this uh, youtube channel called jhr is tech and j security it's a wonderful channel that teaches several aspects of streamlit and other functionalities that we didn't cover in this course like custom theming apart from that another channel i would recommend for learning streamlit is data professor come over to the streamlit playlist of his channel and you can build great stuff so that was basically it of this course i hope you learned a lot this was my first time making a video course i am happy i was able to share some information that I have looking forward to seeing your great streamlit apps have a great day